Hi, this is Maury Moreland Morrison here to tell you Geico has more than just great savings. Much more. Yes, while Geico could help you rack up more moolah faster than you can say metamorphosis, they've also been the fastest growing auto insurer for more than 10 years. That's more like it. Furthermore, Geico has fast and friendly claim service. That might seem like an oxymoron, but it's not. All the more reason to say no other auto insurer has more more than Geico. Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. One, my name is Sergeant Talk Radio. Ah, I keep on forgetting that. Hello, everyone. My name is Gonzalo Duran, and I am the host of Vet Talk Radio. I want to say a special thank you to the Patriot Radio Nation Network for giving us this opportunity and, and platform to share across the country the opportunity for everyone to listen to veterans having a voice, sharing their experiences, and giving them the knowledge of organizations around the country that are dedicated to helping veterans. Now, we're going to start off with the top of the hour break, and then we'll be right back with Dean from the Memorial Truck. We'll be right right back, everyone. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Dave Bray, America's favorite patriotic rocker, and you are listening to Patriot Nation Radio Network. On 112, shots fired. Get a shot! Get a shot! Get out! At DaveBrayUSA.com. Definitely want to check the video out. I worked with uh, an organization called Lesman. It's a media watchdog for police officers when officers and, and law enforcement are being misrepresented in social media and these, all these different causes that are out there, you know, sort of pushing the blame. You know, they go out and they break laws for no reason just to prove that the cops, A, have to be police. They don't choose the laws they uphold. They uphold the laws because that's their job. Whether they're passive laws or aggressive laws, they go out and break them for the reason of to get a police response, which is just wasting taxpayer dollars, and I wish people would see that. These cops are putting themselves in harm's way on a daily basis. When your dad's a police officer and he goes to work, he straps on a gun and a badge. But these people are going into harm's way, you know? Um, and it's it's an, it's an honorable job. It's one of the hardest jobs, and it takes a special person. And I think in this day and age, um, you know, we should be rallying behind them. But this one, this song, Last Call, is about a fallen officer sort of giving his last sort of will and testament over the radio after he's been in a gunfight and he's hit and he's pinned down and he's not going to make it. And he just sort of gives his words. I'm bleeding now. There's no time, no time. Stand by for a special announcement. Emergency traffic only. 1145. Prince William calling, 1145. This is the final call for 1145. Officer Ashley Gwenden, end of watch, February 27th, 2016. May you rest in peace. Visit TrueTexasPatriotGear.com. Buy this gear to support efforts by like-minded patriots in Texas who met at the first Stand By Me for Liberty rally. The group is lending their time and efforts to help political prisoners to let them know they are not being forgotten. Visit TrueTexasPatriotGear.com and buy some gear and show your patriotic support for those who are standing for liberty. Welcome back, everyone. My name is Sergeant Gonzalo Duran, and this is Let's Talk Radio. Today's guest is Kane Kilomola. 
from the Memorial Truck. Dane, thank you for being with us today. Oh, thank you for having me. Dane, um, can you give the audience a little bit of brief history about your military career, please? Yeah, so um, I graduated back in 84, um, so I was on a delay entry program um, going into the Navy. Um, so I was already um, signed up and just waiting to graduate from high school and then go in. Um, so, so I went to, uh, straight out of high school into boot camp, and, and then I, got in, I was in the Navy for um, um, four years until um, I had to get out of the Navy um, because my, my dad died, and my mom was all alone, and I wanted to make sure that she was taken care of. Um, so I got out and then um, did some reserve time um, with the Navy, and then um, ended up doing reserve time with the National Guard, and then in 2005, um, got activated to Iraq. Um, so did a whole year workup, and then actually didn't leave until 2006 um, to Iraq. Um, so my um, area of operation in Iraq was um, Ramadi, Iraq, and so I was over there as a um, as a drone pilot, and um, definitely. Um, hello. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, we're here. Yeah, so that's, um, and then I was able to um, actually retire out in 2010. Um, so uh, that um, ended, um, started a different um, avenue. Um, I went um, into college after that, uh, graduated from the University of Phoenix, um, psychology degree, uh, bachelor um, of science. And this uh, just been, you know, just the whole thing about the memorial truck is, um, I came back, um, as we all come back different, um, had survivor skills and just, really, just didn't really feel comfortable, uh, you know, coming back home and just was, life was different. Um, as you know, um, you did many tours and it's just not the same. And I, I so while I was going to the VA, getting help for my PTSD and um, other issues um, I had, or still am having, um, I, I, I was on the road a lot, um, so I would see a lot of vehicles on the road, and you know you see a lot of vehicles with advertisement. Um, you see big semis or um, big trucks, um, but um, you, you see a lot of these small trucks too, um, and vehicles with um, um, like art on them. So I was, I was curious, like you know, why wouldn't it be nice to have something that would uh, represent the men and women that died in Iraq? Um, since I was only in Iraq and didn't go to Afghanistan. I said, you know, I know that period, so I thought I can honor my brothers and sisters, you know, um, by putting them on my truck. So um, I, I made some phone calls. Um, I got a, a hold of a company up in L.A. Um, called Top Wraps, and they, um, I went in there, and they, I told them what I, was, what I wanted, and um, they um, go, went ahead and did um, uh, through a computer. It's, it's also, everything can be computer generated. And what it is, it's, um, it's a 3M sticker, like a vinyl sticker that goes over your car. And, and they wrapped up everything they could, um, bumper to the windows, to the rear view mirrors, uh, side view mirrors, I mean the side view mirrors, and just everything they could cover um, to get as much like pictures we could. Um, it was 4,422 men and women, um, their pictures um, that died in Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, it's a collage. It's um, from a distance. It looks like American flag. As you get closer, you see their faces, and that's what really hits hits everyone. You know, seeing how many people, how young they look, how you know, from different. You know, it's just it's just a moving it's a moving thing, and and it's, uh, I, it's I, very I, touching I, and emotional. It is, like, and still, I, you know, the, I, I mean, I had it for three years. You know. Now, so originally like when you different. joined the military, Dan, when you originally joined the military, um, it was straight out of high school. Um, what what mm-hmm. was your your reason though? Was it for education? Was it for employment? Oh status? no! So um oh so, this is the word. I never I I I hated school. I just didn't. I wasn't one of those school people. Um, I hated studying. Hated reading. Anything to do with uh, books. I'd rather just learn straight um straightforward. You know, by doing. So um, I, I actually, my, my father and his father, uh, we're kind of a generation of, of military, so we're a military family. Um, that's how actually um, we landed in California. Um, we're of uh, Hawaiian descent. Um, both parents are Hawaiian. And so we already established here. My dad um, was um, stationed out at Camp Hilton. 
So we already had our roots here in California, so we ended up staying here rather than going back to Hawaii. Um, and just it was just um, it was no. It was a no-brainer for for all of us. So all my brothers, we all joined, except for my little one, because um, he's handicapped, so he couldn't. But my other two brothers, um, we all joined, and we all retired out of the military. So it was it was just something that we, I mean, we were bred it for. We're, um, well, the reason from, I from the reason back. I bring it up is because the um, the work that you're doing right now, it it shows what a patriotic um, background and life that you've lived. You, you know you get out of high school, you follow your family's footsteps, you join the military, mm-hmm. and you come out. Right. And instead of um, going and, you know, starting um, some new project that somebody's already doing, you, you thought outside the box, and you started the Memorial Truck. Now, um, the Ramadi, uh, it's, I don't know if you know, but today is the 11th year uh, anniversary of when uh, the Marines went in. Um, so it, you went there at that time. Right. And I I do get um so I do have a lady here from the news team that comes and um and does the interview with me um every year, um so yeah we talk about Ramadi how how it's changed how much it's the, I mean the American people do not realize how much of a struggle it was to be in Ramadi and to to actually fight fight I mean just fight for that um, there was so much chaos um, a lot of IEDs there was so much IEDs in 2006 um, unbelievable I would have never guessed that we would clean up Ramadi as clean and uh, as good as it is today from all the terrorists it's, it was just uh, it, it, it had like so many different um, uh, how can I put it it was so many different um, groups out there you know, whatever whatever you want to call them, um, they were they were out to um, definitely um, to get us. And and it's it's now it's different. It's all like the kids were playing in the streets when we were there. Um, it was just so it was, it wasn't safe for anybody there. So now they're in the streets. There's actually I think there's grass and stuff. They're growing grass in the, the soccer field and the stadium's back open and just the different things they had there that was all shut down and. It, it was a definitely um, it's it's a it's a change a big change you know that needs to be done. Now we, I'm glad we got to do it. You know, we appreciate the fact that you took this opportunity to speak with regarding the memorial truck. Um, but before we we go into a little more details in that, you know, I like to say, um, you know, this show is dedicated in the memory of your daughter. If you could, if you wouldn't mind briefly talking about, um, you know, her name and and I mean, what what's happening with you? Oh, for sure, yeah. Um, so in, on June um, June twenty second of um, of last year, um, my daughter died um, at EDC um, Las Vegas um, Electric Daisy Carnival uh, concert event, a three day event. Um, so she died um, over for a, over a heat stroke. Um, it was rec- I think it's still recorded the hottest time in Vegas, um, at least one of the hottest times in Vegas. And so I got the call uh, Monday morning. Um, and this was, you know, this was wasn't prepared, right? I mean, who is, um, who would ever be prepared to, um, you know, your daughter's in the hospital in critical condition, but you know, we, I didn't know how bad until it got there, and, and then you know, when they told us on Wednesday, the twenty second, she um, was clinically pronounced brain dead. Um, so, you know, it was just um, here. I here I'm like, okay, Iraq was the worst part of my life. Um, and then it turned out that I, it wasn't. Iraq wasn't no, wasn't as hard as um, losing a child. Um, when I lost my daughter, it's just, I, it, it's the pain that you can never. It's it's the it's the worst hurt I ever felt in my heart. And I condolences to that, and and um, anything that we could do to help you with this struggle, you know, we're hoping that this kid um, give you something to to push forward in her name. If you can see her name for. So we can say a little prayer for her later on. Okay, thank you. Yes. And her name was. Oh yeah, her. So her name was um, Kenani. First name is Kenani. Poor Lena. Uh, um, this, time of so just to to be clear, audience, uh, today's show is uh, dedicated to Kenani for and um, Dave lost um, his daughter last year in June to a heat stroke, and uh, we're hoping that. If uh, if anybody's out there, they can hear this and see that um, you know there's a lot of things going on 
in the world. And, you know, today on the anniversary of the 11th year of Ramadi and the Marines going in, um, we have someone taking the opportunity to share their struggles and also their their fortitude on pushing forward. You know, we're very grateful for the fact that you mentioned something as like, uh, openly as PTSD. A lot of people keep that uh, hidden. They don't want to share. They don't want people to know. But you, you, you threw it out there immediately into the conversation. Um, I mm-hmm. mean, I would assume that the, one of the reasons why you did the truck, and you already gave us an explanation on to remembering our brothers and sisters um, that lost their lives. But, I mean, I'm assuming you going out there is helping other people or helping yourself, you know, deal with mm-hmm. your issues and also helping others out there. Because when somebody sees that, they... I can only imagine the stories that you might have of people telling you how they... Oh, they I, I have, have a lot of them. stories. Um, there's a lot of stories. Um, like um, this one time I was driving and, and the lady came beside me and um, and I was looking and I saw I looked over and saw her crying and, she, and I said, oh, you okay, ma'am? Um, she said, um, that's my son on the side of your truck. And I just totally like, okay, um, you know, let's let's pull over the side and let's... Um, you know, take a picture of this. So this is this is this is why um, I did this truck to honor all the men and women that died. And your son is never forgotten. And I, so I have these little sayings on the truck too, like never forgotten. Um, you know, the fallen um, in memory of the fallen. You know, OIF, OEF. Um, so no one's forgotten. Even the 22 um, a day aren't forgotten. Their families, um, they'll uh, write to me on Facebook, um, the memorial truck, and tell me, oh, can you put my son on you? He, he killed himself when he came back. I'm like, for sure, man. I mean, it's for everybody that um, died because of Iraq or Afghanistan tied to get to, um, to the two conflicts we had. No, that's, uh, I mean, that's one of many that I'm sure you have. Now, mm-hmm. the... Now, do you mind if we ask the cost of the the work that it took in for that? Yeah. So um, back um, three years ago, it it cost um, six thousand. And that's out of your own pocket to to do this. Out of my own pocket. Um, for your people. Well, no, I'm sorry. I take it back. I think I, I, it was it was three. It's three thousand, six thousand. I think it would be right now. It. Um, I don't know why it would be up more, but. Um, I, I was talking to the guys from LA Raps, and that's where it's from, LA Raps, and it's um, okay. yeah, or top rap, top raps, um, for sure. And it's probably because of the cost; everything keeps on going up every year. But um, yeah, and plus everybody's doing it now; everybody's putting wraps on their car, so I think they're more they're getting more business, and then I think it's just the cost goes up. Yeah, uh, I don't know if you remember, but uh, the Devil Dog Mobile and uh, the it's I on the do. East Coast. And the Memorial uh-huh. Truck is on the West Coast, and I do my best to try to push uh, the name out there as much as we can. I always wanted my my dream was to take the truck across America and show everybody that that I, I could reach the touch that I'm going to be here, 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 and how many people? I mean, just to get as many people I can to see it. You know what I mean? And actually touch it. No, it's touch just the a, memorial truck. for the audience that for the audience that may not know uh, the Mario Truck. Mm-hmm. Would you give us uh, the website, I mean, do you have a website or is it um, yeah, primarily on Facebook. Facebook? It is. It's on Facebook. It's it, it's um it's called the Memorial Track. Um, yeah, that's the only place I have it is on Facebook because um it seems to be the most moving um, um media out there. So it, it, for the masses, it, it really, it's out there. So I put it on there. Put it on Facebook. So if the audience out there can reach the Memorial Track, uh, you can also reach out to Dane. Um, and his last name is spelled K A I M U L O A, uh, and I'm sure he'll push you onto the the other site. Um, for right now, do you know how many individuals you have on your Facebook group? Uh, on the truck, I have 4,422, but we're up to almost 8,000 on on KIA out of Iraq and Afghanistan. So pretty much uh-huh. um, everything's pretty much Afghanistan because um, we're pretty much um, out of Iraq. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, you've kept it up to date, too. I mean, to the top, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. So now, yeah, so uh, are, you, are you... I, I post it. Mm-hmm. Have you made this into a 501c3 or, or an office I, I at all? Haven't, I, I haven't done anything with it. I just... Um, I didn't... Um, 
I didn't know how to go about doing it for one thing. Um, didn't know if I, you know, I, I didn't want it to be one of those, you know, you know, you feel like, um, oh, you got to donate to this and this. Um, I didn't know exactly, you know, what what would be our mission statement, how to actually um, get something for for the memorial truck started, and it being in good taste to where people won't be looking at it like, oh, we have to donate. You know what I mean? I didn't want to do that. No, so I got that's why I, I pay for everything, you know what I mean, out of my own. And and I'm fine with that, you know. So I'm I'm actually um, going to put um, two TV screens in the back to cover everybody so I can run it through the um, the TV, um, their pictures through the um, the flat screens. Well, I want to put this out there while I have the opportunity. Um, if, if you want, I'll be happy to send you um, on how to – on how to start the nonprofit paperwork, and then also uh, for the viewers or for yourself, if anybody uh, would like to donate uh, to the organization, um, the memorial truck, and help out Dane, then I'll be happy to throw out there that Devil Dog USA, which I'm the chief executive officer of, would be happy to accept the donation. And if you specify for the memorial truck, we'll be happy to make sure that Dane gets it to help him and alleviate some of the cost that comes up for him showing the memory of our brothers and sisters from YAF, OEF, and Afghanistan um, in such patriotic movement that you're doing. Yeah, it would be nice of us, me and you, to meet up um, because you're the East Coast on the West Coast and and actually go bring the, drive the truck across. Well, I wouldn't drive it. I'd definitely trailer it across because it's um, it would get damaged on the road, you know, all the debris and stuff, um, the weather. But definitely trailer it across America and just show it off. Um, and then we meet up in, the, um, in on the East Coast would be that'd be that'd be something I I dream about. I, I would definitely wish that it could happen. That sounds like something that uh, a mission plan for the next year. Something that we could start yes. off in uh, the shop here. That'd be great. Well, well. Besides uh, the memorial truck, what other activities do you do to keep you so busy and and um, help oh, push the cause? So I, 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 um, as you know, I lost my daughter in June. So um, from the, all the holidays um, we spent without her, um, I was able to go to Israel with this group called Heroes to Heroes. Um, great group. Um, my friend told me about it. I got a hold of them and. It was so quick. They um, they just um, they picked me up, and I was able to go with them. And it was all paid for. Um, so it's like a whole week um, of touring Israel um, from from north to south, um, east to the west. Um, we did the whole tour, a beautiful tour. The tour guide was one of the best tour guides I, I've ever seen. Um, so in depth, so passionate. Um, gave us the whole stories, and you know we got to see where the Dead Sea Scrolls were. You know, um, and we went to a bunch of places. Um, we got baptized in the um, Jordan River. Uh, we went to the Dead Sea, um, Jerusalem, um, Bethlehem, you know, Nazareth, this, um, the West Bank um, to the, um, uh, it was the place where I'm on top of a hill there, um, and it's overlooking um, the, um, the Jordan. Um, so it was, um, it, was just, it was just a great tour. I, I recommend for all vets, and it's open to all vets, um, this um, it's Heroes of Heroes. Um, um, send them um, um, application, fill it out, and and you will um, enjoy it. I mean, this is the best, one of the best tours I've ever done. All right, thank you, uh, Dean. Now we'll make sure to put that on the link for this this episode. Now, besides uh, besides what we talked about so far, I want to make sure that people understand that um, what you're doing is trying to push the movement to that the veterans from the YEF, OEF, and I can't say I remember for giving their ultimate um, sacrifice and service of our country. If they, if somebody would like to reach you and see and maybe even send you a story, how would they reach you? Oh, yes. Yeah. So you can go on either get go on Memorial Truck um, on Facebook or um, type in my name, Dane um, Kaimaloa, and I, I, I'll spell it out. So it's D-A-N-E, and the last name is K-A-I-M-U-L-O-A. And so um, just type either the motor truck or my name, and then um, I will get back with you. 
All right, Dan, thank you for ha- um, being on today. We appreciate it very much. And just want to say thank you for being uh, just a patriot for our nation. And thank you for your service, too, Gonzo. I know you did a lot for the Marine Corps, and I, we appreciate it. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. Everyone, that was Dan Kilomola. Uh, it's spelled K A I M U L O A. A true American patriot. This is uh, Vet Talk Radio, and I'm your host, Sergeant Gonzalo Duran. Uh, we're going to be kicking off uh, a song by Vero G called Summertime, and that's how we're ending the show. Catch us next week on Wednesday at 7 p.m. We should have another guest, another veteran, another organization that's dedicated to helping veterans from across the nation. Once again, I want to say thank you to the Patriot Nation Radio Network for giving us this opportunity. So let's kick it off with summertime and to end our show. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I got the summer, summertime sadness. Makes me blue, gotta get past it. Can't take no pills on the potion. Gotta get off this madness. I'm about to set off in this mission. If I don't take that decision, should I go this way or that way? Or stay safe and stay sane? The sadness is getting to me. Don't wanna jump off this building. I'm losing my mind so quickly. Just two seconds off this swiftly. I see you all in front of me. No one cares if I get rid of me. Better do you a favor and say my last prayer.
Well, that's all for today's show. Once again, you can catch us next week at 7 p.m. Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Progressive presents Mind Flowness with Flow. Before you lies a beautiful meadow. In that meadow, Progressive Direct has placed its auto insurance rates alongside those of competitors. You select the lowest rate and feel a great sense of calm. A great sense of oh. Compare Progressive Direct rates with competitors' rates so you can rest easy. Visit Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Comparison rates not available in all states or situations. Prices vary based on how you buy.